Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about handling slowly changing dimensions with Power BI. Stay tuned. If you're finding this for the very first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date from all the videos from both Adam and this guy. Slowly Change Dimensions, it's a video that's been in the making for, and I don't know, since last year. I'm always getting questions about, hey Patrick, how do I handle slowly changing dimensions? It depends. It depends on what type of attributes are you working with on your slowly changed dimension. And the most common response to that is type two. There's several different types of attributes that can be on your dimension. Type zero, type one, type two, type three, type four, yada, yada, yada. Type two is the most popular one. That's like the consensus. How do I handle this type two? Because it's historical. If you're not familiar with this type of ter terminology, go and give Ralph Kimball's The Data Warehouse Toolkit a read. There's a book called Star Schema. There's a, actually a pretty decent Wikipedia page out there that talks about specifically about slowly changing dimensions. I'll give a brief uh, description or definition of some of the terms, but I'm not going to go in depth. I'm assuming that you have some basic knowledge of this. Okay. All right. So you guys know how I like to do instead of all this talking, let's do what? Let's head over to my laptop. So before I get into the demos, I want to just kind of explain what I mean by slowly changing dimensions. And like I said, there's multiple types. I'm just going to talk about a few and stop at type two because it's the most common. There's a type zero and type zero is often referred to as retained. So what it means is if I do an update on my source, so this is the store table in my source database. Once I do that update, nothing happens, right? So I'm updating store ID S1. And so if I change the manager to Patrick, I don't update it in the data warehouse. It just, it's always Adam. No matter what I do, it's always going to keep persist the exact same name. So every time you add a row to your dimension, there's typically a surrogate key and an alternate key. The surrogate key is a primary key that you generate inside your data warehouse. It's like an auto incrementing number. If you're familiar with SQL Server, it's an identity column. And then there's an alternate key which is the primary key from the source system. And so every time I insert a row, it'll get a new surrogate key. If I'm changing something about an alternate key, it'll be the exact same value for the alternate key. It retains those initial values at the initial load. And then for type one, if I run the exact same update that I was gonna run earlier in my source system, all it's gonna do, it's gonna find the row for that, that particular store, and then it's just gonna overwrite the value. So if the old manager was Adam, they're gonna change it back to to Patrick. I mean, we're going to change it to whatever the source It's going to match the source. So type zero, not changing anything. Type two is just going to overwrite what's ever there. All right. The big question, the type two, right? So type two is historical. You can see right now I have two rows, uh, surrogate key one for my store one and surrogate key two for my store two. And right now Adam is the manager of store one. But what happens if I run this in the source? We're changing the manager. Patrick's going to be the manager now. So if we do that and the first operation that's going to happen is it's going to say, okay, from this date, to that date, Adam was the manager. Expire it. Stop. He's not the manager anymore. And then a new row is going to be inserted for the exact same store. It's going to get a different surrogate key. And then you'll see that now Patrick is the manager. And so we could track you know, who was the manager historically. And then these two columns right here, they're often using a data warehouse, a start and end date to tell you the range. Adam was the manager from this date to that date. And now Patrick is the manager from that date to that date. Sometimes they add an additional column, like a Boolean to tell you what's the current role, which one should you use, you know, when you're reporting. And in this case, there would be a one here and a zero on this row. And then maybe Adam became the manager of another store. And so we can see we've added Adam as the manager of store three. So that's some basic, knowledge, you know, basic description of how the slowly changing dimension works. And so if you're using type two, it can be kind of challenging because maybe you want to report a little differently. Let me show you how this works just by using this, how I have this set up today. And without doing any modifications, I'll show you how this works. If you go into the resources folder that I created, there is a script called store sales database schema. If you're running a SQL server, you can just copy this and run this and take a look. But I created this script that it's almost in line with the slides that I created. So if you run a query against the store table, you'll see that I have some history for store two or Adam was the manager for this range. And then Patrick was the manager for that range. And you can see this is the current role for that store because I have a one specific there. So if I head over to Power BI, if you take a look at the model, you'll see that I have a dimension for store, a dimension for calendar, and then I have my facts, store sales. And you can see I have a relationship between the surrogate keys from store. So the store surrogate key 
in the store surrogate key in my fact table. If I go here and let's say I wanted to calculate the bonuses and I want the bonuses to be true to the time that that person managed the store. So whatever Adam managed store two or store one and the same thing for Patrick. So I created a little measure called manager bonus and you'll see it's really simple. So the bonus is 10% of sales. And so I say manager sales times 10% and manager sales is just the sum of the sales amount. Any calculation I do is going to use the relationship between the surrogate keys to determine their bonuses. So you can see right here, Adam gets credit for store two and store three, and then Patrick gets credit for store one and store two. And it just works. What about sales? Adam's no longer the manager for store two. And so I don't want sales to roll up to Adam. I want all the sales to roll up to Patrick. And so if we go to my sales tab here, if I choose Adam, hmm, store two, Adam gets credit from January to August, and then he gets credit for his new store. Patrick gets credit for store one, and then he gets credit for store two when he became the manager. That's not quite the requirements that my end users, my report consumers wanted. How do you address that? Because instead of showing any sales for Adam at store two, I want them all to roll up for Patrick. If this meets your requirements, stop. You don't need to do anything. It just works. That's just how Power BI handles it. But if you need to modify and say, okay, I only want to show sales for Adam at the current store where he's the manager. And I only want to show sales for Patrick where he's the current manager. And I want it all to roll up regardless of when you managed it or when you didn't manage it. I don't want to see any sales for a store that you're not the manager of. How do you handle that? How do you handle it? Let me show you. If you have access to the source, it's rather easy. And if you're using the data warehouse, I I suggest that you do this in the source because if I have it in the central repository, then anyone that connects to that data warehouse will just automatically, you know, consume that logic. If I do it locally in the Power BI desktop, then it's got to be replicated over and over and over again. If you're not using shared data sets, especially just for illustration purposes, let's start here. This is what's in my dim store already. I have a little history here, but what I've done is I've created a view that will say, okay, so I have these two rows for store two. This time range, Adam was the manager. This time range, Patrick is the manager and Patrick is currently the manager. So this is the current row that I wanna use. So I've added an additional column using a subquery to say, anytime you see store two, show me the current manager. So if I added another row and changed manager, it would automatically change. It's dynamic because I'm doing this, you know, from a query perspective, replacing store two everywhere. So I don't care about the history. I only care about the current manager. I know that's a lot. Maybe you wanna rewind it and rewatch it, but if you get a good understanding slow change dimensions, you'll understand exactly what I'm doing. If you have any questions, comments, you know what to do. Post it in the comments below. I created another view that just leveraged that view and it's actually modifying my fact table a little bit. So I've added another column, another surrogate key called current store. And you can see anywhere there's a two, I'm replacing it with a three, all right? So now check this out. I head over to Power BI and if we go to my relationship, you'll see I have two relationships now between dim store and my fact store sales. The original relationship between store SK and store SK, and now I have an inactive relationship between store SK and current store SK. So now if I head back to my report, you'll see that bonuses still work because I'm using my two original measures, which are gonna use the active relationships, whatever the active the relationship is in my case it is just the store sk which is going to track the history and so i want to give both of my managers credit for whatever range they were working at the uh the corresponding store and so it works and i want to look at sales and remember my requirement was a little different i don't want to show adam having any credit for store two because he's not the current manager there i want it all to roll up to patrick so for store two you should see the full year's worth of data and then for adam i should only see a chart with store three. How do I fix it? Well, because I added that current store SK, I'm able to create a measure and override the relationship using the use relationship function. And now I'm telling them instead of using the surrogate keys with store SK and store SK, use store SK and current store SK. And so now if I go here and get rid of manager sales and bring in manager sales with history. You can see now Adam only gets credit for store three and Patrick gets credit, full credit for both store one and store two. And it just kind of works, okay? It is 
an extra measure that you'll have to add. And if you have multiple measures that you're trying to do this for, this can be a lot of work. Fortunately, we can get around this using calculation groups. Alberto Ferrari did a great video on how can you do this with calculation groups, right? Mine's gonna be slightly different. It's gonna be selected stores or manager to use, but you definitely can do it. Let me show you. You open up the tabular editor, you would create a calculation group. So you right click on the table, choose new calculation group. And then I created one called manager to use. And then I created two items, one for the historical, which is just a selected measure because it's going to use the active relationship for store SK. And then I did one for current measure. So whatever the current measure selected, it's just going to override the relationship and use this relationship between store SK and current store SK. So now if I go over here, to this one, and you look at the bar chart down here, I'm just using manager sales, the one that's gonna use the active, the active relationship. And so if I choose historical, so I have my calculation group and I added it as a slice to the page. So if I say use historical, you can see Patrick doesn't get the full credit for store two and Adam still gets credit for store two and store three. But if I wanna look at the current manager, I can do a quick toggle. So I toggle here, Adam, Adam only gets credit for store three and Patrick gets credit for all of store one and all of store two. It just kind of works. There's not much effort you need to do into it. Do if you use calculation groups, you can create your no measures as normal and then override it with user relationship using calc groups. This all works and this is all great if you have access to the source, but what if you don't have access to the source? What if you can't change this and you still want to do it and you're going to use a shared data set. So you'll have the logic in one place. Well, I thought about doing this with the data flow, but I have to put the surrogate key on the fact table, the new, uh, the new current store key on the fact table. And the fact table has a lot of data, depending on the volume of data, data flows could run into some challenges. I just decided to do it in the desktop and you can use incremental refresh and other things to publish it out. And so my M may not be the most optimized, but I just want to give you a, an idea of a sense how this works. So I have a model here that's just original model. And so if I go to transform, you'll see I have my dim store and I have my fact sales and I need to add that current store SK here. And so if you go to the resources of this video, you'll see that there's a function right there. Copy that function out, go back over to your Power Query editor and then do a new blank query. Just go here, advanced editor, right? So we create this function and we'll call it FN get current store SK. And then what we'll do is go to fact store sales, choose add column, invoke function. And then we'll say this guy right here, the function that we created, and we want to pass it the store SK because based on that store SK is going to go get me the current store SK. I click OK, expand this out because I have a good bit of data here. This is going to take a little bit to run because I'm doing some merges and things like that in the model. If you're interested in optimizing this, Chris Webb has some great blog posts on how to optimize this. And Chris and I did a video that actually walks you through how to optimize some of these things. So now I click OK. It's going to churn a little bit to run that function for all the data in my preview. And then you'll see right here where it's two, it's going to be replaced with three see once it finishes up. And so everywhere there's a two, it replaces it with the three. From that point, you can just model it out like I did with the inactive relationships, build your measures, build your calc group, and everything will just work. Just know that the refresh could take a little bit when you're trying to do this. So you need to either optimize this or even you know, work with your data warehouse guy to put this a person, your data warehouse person to get this added to the source. All right. What do you guys think? Yay. Questions, yay. Comments. Are you facing the challenges with the slowly changing dimensions? I'd love to know. Let's continue the conversation where in the comments below. If it's your first time visiting the guy in the cube channel, hit that subscribe button. If you like my video, give me a big thumbs up. As always from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.